This is Algebra 2, Unit 4, Lesson 9 on graphs of logarithms. Now, we're going to be looking at some more graphs of logarithms and be looking at their construction, transformation, domain, and ranges. So, let's consider the logarithmic function y equals log to the base 3 of x and its inverse y equals 3 to the x. Now, let's construct a table of values for y equals 3 to the x. And then we'll use those values to do the uh, logarithmic function. So, here we go. y equals 3 to the x. Well, we know 3 to the 0 power is always going to be 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. And 3 squared is 9. Now, remember, um, when you have a negative exponent, it's a reciprocal. 3 to the negative 1 it becomes 1 over 3. And 3 to the negative 2 is 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 ninth. All right, so let's graph the exponential function y equals 3 to the x. So we're going to start at negative 2, 1 ninth. You have to kind of guesstimate where it is. 1 ninth would be about there. And then negative 1 would be 1 third, which would be about there. And then 0, 1 would be here. And then 1, 3. 1, 2, 3 would be right there. And then 2, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 would look like that. All right, so when I draw my graph, Pretend I'm keeping it kind of curved like it's supposed to be. This would be y equals 3 to the x. All right, now remember it's a continuous graph. It's never going to hit the x-axis because it's going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, now we want to do y equals log to the base 3 of x. Now remember, these two are inverses because this it can be rewritten as 3 to the y is equal to x, which is the inverse of this. You flip the x and y. So if you flip the x and y, um, all you have to do is flip-flop these. So if x is 1 ninth, log y equals log to the base 3 of x is going to be negative 2. All right, so for this to be 1 ninth, this would have to be negative 2. All right, this would be 1 third. This would be negative 1. This would be 1. This would be 0, 3, and 1, 9, and 2. Okay, so remember, it's an inverse, it's a reflection over y equals x. So if I do 1 ninth, negative 2, be approximately right there. 1 third is negative 1. 1 is at 0. 3, 1, 2, 3 is at 1. And 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 2. So to do the log base graph, we have to flip the x and y of the exponential graph. And you can see that it is reflection over y equals x. All right, now that we know what the graphs look like, we want to be able to discover what their domain and range is. So let's look at these two graphs and determine their domain and range. All right, first let's look at y equals 3 to the x. y equals 3 to the x is this graph right here. If we look at the domain of this graph, it's the x values that work. Are there any x values that don't work on this graph if I go through here? No, all the x values will work. No matter what I pick, I will always have a y value when I plug in x here. I will have a y value. So y equals 3 to the x, the dom domain is all real numbers. So basically from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so what about the range? All right, the range is the y values. All right, now, since I have all these x values to use, is there any y value that I cannot get? All right, so if I pick my x values here, is there any way that this doesn't touch the x-axis, does it? So for this graph right here, all of the y values have to be greater than 0. Okay, will they ever actually equal 0? No. And they're never going to be negative for this particular one. So this graph right here, y has got to be greater than 0, would be your range. So your range for this one is going to be y is greater than 0, which in interval notation would be from... 0 to infinity. Okay, now let's look at the domain and range for the y equals log to the base 3 of x. Okay, flip back here. Let's look at the domain. All right, what x values can I use? All right, so if I'm using my x values here. Are there any x values that I can't use? 
Well, none of my x's that are negative are on this graph. I can't have a negative x. So for this one, my domain has got to be the x values that are greater than 0. So that means starting from 0 going to infinity. Okay. Now, the range of the graph. Let's take a look at the range. Are there any y values that we cannot use? Well, let's see. This is going to be continuing going down. This is going to be continuing going up. It's going to go up kind of slowly, but it's going to go up. So this one is actually going to be all real numbers as well. All real numbers. So from negative infinity to positive infinity. So what do you notice about the domain and range? For y equals 3 to the x, the domain was all real numbers. For y equals log to the base 3 of x, the range was all real numbers. For the range of y equals 3 to the x, y is greater than 0 would be the range, and that becomes the domain x is greater than 0. So remember, these are inverses of the functions. So since they're inverses, the domain and range is going to flip-flop as well. All right, now let's try uh, using the calculator to sketch the graph of y equals log to the base 10 of x and the graph is below and label the x-intercept and state the domain and range. Okay, so first thing I want to do in my calculator is set the window so it matches. So my x's go from 0 to 10 and my y's from negative 2 to 2. So when I do that, my window is going to be from 0 to 10 and my y's, we said, from negative 2 to positive 2. Okay, now if I go here, y equals, I'm going to clear these out. And remember that log to the base 10 of x is actually the log key right here because it's called the, the common log. So that's log to the base 10. You can use the alpha window one, but it's 10 is, it's got its own key. All right, so this is log to the base 10 of x. All right, so when we have that, that is my graph. I'm going to look at my graph, see what it looks like. There's my graph. Okay, so it's going to go up like this. It's going to cross the x-intercept at 1. So it's going to go up like this and go on through. So when I do a sketch of that, right, let's do a sketch. It's going to go up like this, be really close. And kind of go like that. Okay, so this is y equals log to the base 10 of x. Okay, so this point right here is the x-intercept, and we said that was at 1, 0. That is the x-intercept. Okay, so what is the domain of this function? All right, are there any x values that are negative? No. Um, we can't say, raise 10 to some power and get a negative number. It doesn't work. So your domain here has to be greater than 0. So x would have to be greater than 0. Okay, and all real numbers would be your range because your y values will keep going up. This will keep going up incrementally. It'll eventually get up farther and farther and farther and farther you go out. But the range is actually going to be all real numbers. All right, so from negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, you may also see all real numbers written like a capital R, kind of like that. It means also the same thing. All right, so that is y equals log to the base 10 of x. So you, when you do log to the base 10, it will be, it's the log key. You could also do the alpha key, alpha window key, and do log base and number 5. If you put in the 10 down here of x, this is going to be the same thing, just to show you. When I graph this, it'll go right over the other one. See, it's the same graph. Okay, so the log to the base 10 is the log key. Um, any other base would have to be the alpha window key for that. All right, let's look. Which of the following equations describes the graph shown below? Show or explain how you made your choice. Okay, so this is definitely a shift of the uh, log base graph. So we know the general log base graph looks like this. Um, when we have y equals log to whatever base the x, we saw that it's going to look something like this. All right, so this is definitely shifted. All right, remember the domain on log to the base uh, b of x, whatever it happens to be, has a domain of your x's are going to be greater than 0. So this would be what's called an asymptote. That is where x cannot be. That's your stopping for your domain. 
All right, so that would be the y-axis. Now, notice here how this graph goes. All right, it goes down like this. Where does your domain start for this one? Well, your domain for your x's starts right here. All right, so this is going to be at the point. Let me see if I draw an illustrator. X is, this is actually never going to touch this, but this is at x equals negative 3. That is um, how this is. So how did this shift? This was at x equals 0 to x equals negative 3. So this is going to shift to the left 3. Now how do we describe shifting to the left 3 using the parentheses here? All right, so we know it's going to shift to the left 3. Remember, if you're shifting to the left, it's always going to be the opposite sign that's in the parentheses. So we can eliminate this one because this is plus 2. We can eliminate this one because this is going the wrong direction. All right, so it's either got to be this one or this one. All right, so we know it's got to be x plus 3 and then shifted down 1. Okay, so we moved it 3 to the left and down 1. So if I, looking at my values here, 3 to the left and down 1, the next thing I want to look at is what um, base I'm going to be in. So let's take a look at my values here. All right, I want to look at my intercept, first of all. Okay, so this is my x-intercept right there. All right, what was the x-intercept on the original graph y equals log v of the x? It was right here. It was at 1, 0. Now, my x-intercept on this one is at negative 1, 0. That's my x-intercept. All right, so what we have to figure out when we graph this, um, how did we shift for this? Is it log to the base 2 or log to the base 3? All right, let's plug it in and see what happens. All right, now my y-intercept, we know x is negative 1, y is 0. So if I plug this in, 0 equals, I'm doing this one right here, log to the base 2 of negative 1 plus 3 minus 1. Okay, let's see if this equals 0. Log to the base 2, negative 1 plus 3 is 2 minus 1. Okay, now what is log to the base 2 of 2? 2 to what power is 2? Is equal to 1. And 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So that must be the correct one. Now if I did log to the base 3, Let's try that out. Uh, 0 is equal to log to the base 3 of negative 1 plus 3 minus 1. Log to the base 3 of 2 minus 1. All right, 3 to what power is 2? Well, there is, there is a, it's a decimal power. You'd have to put it in your calculator, but it's not going to equal 0 when you minus 1 from it. Um, you can actually check it. If you did log to the base 3 of 2, uh, you want to use the log base key. log to the base 3 of 2 minus 1. Does that equal 0? Nope, it doesn't. So you can see right there. All right, now if I plugged in log to the base 3 uh, for that particular one, it didn't work um, on that particular one. So what we want to do on that is make sure that we have the right one. So it should be number 3 when you do that. The fact that finding the logarithm of a non-positive number, negative or zero, is not possible in the real world number system allows us to find the domains of a variety of logarithmic functions. So let's determine the domain of the function y equals log to the base 2 of 3x minus 4 and state your answer in set builder notation. Okay, so let's think about what a log does first of all. y equals log to the base 2 of 3x minus 4. Exponentially, that means 2 to the y equals 3x minus 4. That is what this means, the base exponent power. Okay, so if you have 2 to the y equals 3x minus 4, what does that tell you about this value right here? This value right here can't be negative. Because can you take a, num a base of 2 and raise it to a power and get a negative number? No, you can't. All right, so 2 to whatever power has to equal 3x minus 4. So that means if 3x minus 4 can't be negative, 3x minus 4 must be greater than 0. So if I solve this for x, 3x has got to be greater than 4, so x has got to be greater than 4 thirds. So your domain for this value, your x values have to be greater than 4 thirds. All right, let's save the rest for uh, the next class day.